Believe it or not, when I look at this right triangle right here, it only takes me a few moments to fill out all of its angles and side lengths. This is 45 degrees, this is 45 degrees, this is 4, and this is 4. And the same with this triangle right here. This is 60 degrees, this is 3, and this is 3 root 3. So, how did I do that? Well, let me tell you this, I'm not magical or a human calculator. I just know my special right triangles. And you can too. Because you're watching Crazy Calculations, and for today's Crazy Calculations, we're going to be learning about special right triangles. So, what are special right triangles? I wouldn't think too much about this definition, because you will see later in the video, but if you insist on a definition, special right triangles are right triangles that follow a specific pattern based on their angle measures. And these triangles come up again and again in math, so it's really great to have a solid understanding of them. We'll be going over two different types of special right triangles today. The first is called a 45-45-90 right triangle, and it looks like this. And the second is called a 30-60-90 right triangle, and it looks like this. Let's start with the 45-45-90 right triangle. In a 45-45-90 right triangle, it has two angles that are both 45 degrees, and the two leg lengths are the same. And the hypotenuse of a 45-45-90 right triangle is always the leg length times the square root of 2. And why does this work? Well, let's take a look at this right triangle right here. As you can see, this is a 45-45-90 right triangle. And let's call this leg X. Since both of these angles in this right triangle are the same, that means this is an isosceles right triangle, which means these two side lengths must be congruent. And if these side lengths are congruent, that means this side is also X. Now, let's call this side H for hypotenuse, for now. To solve for H in terms of X, we're going to just use the Pythagorean theorem. You might remember it as A squared plus B squared equals c squared, where a and b are the two legs and c is the hypotenuse. So now we're going to plug our values into the Pythagorean theorem. We get x squared plus x squared equals h squared. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to solve for h in terms of x. So we're going to combine like terms, which gives us 2x squared equals h squared. And then we'll take the square root of both sides, so we get the square root of 2x squared equals the square root of h squared. Then we can take the x out of the square root, which gives us x root 2 equals h. So the hypotenuse right here is equal to x root 2. So that's how we got to the pattern of a 45-45-90 right triangle. We just proved that the two legs are equal to each other, and the hypotenuse is that leg times the square root of 2. And we can use this pattern to find the side lengths of any special right triangle, as long as you're given one leg. So let's take a look at this special right triangle right here. The leg length is 3, and following our pattern, we know the other leg length will be the same. So this leg is also 3. And then our pattern also says the leg times the square root of 2 gives us the hypotenuse, so our hypotenuse is 3 root 2. And that's it. Let's try a few more. Let's look at this one right here. The leg length is 9, so the other leg is also 9, and 9 times root 2 is our hypotenuse, so we get 9 root 2. Let's try one more example where we're given the leg. This time the leg is 13, so the other leg is 13, and the hypotenuse is 13 root 2. Again, we're just following this pattern right here. Now, what if we're given the hypotenuse like this? Well, as you can see in our pattern, the hypotenuse is x root 2. And if we divide x root 2 by root 2, it gives us the leg length, which is x. So we can follow the same pattern right here with this triangle. We can do 15 root 2 divided by root 2 which gives us our leg, and the two root 2's cancel out, so we just get 15. So our leg here is 15, and our leg here is also 15. Now, what if the hypotenuse is just a regular integer, like 7? So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to divide 7 by root 2, but it's just going to be a little more work this time. So we get 7 over root 2. But many people don't like square roots in their denominator, and they like to rationalize their fractions. So we're going to do that. We're going to multiply the top and the bottom, by the square root of 2, which gives us 7 root 2 over 2. And now we know our side lengths, 7 root 2 over 2 and 7 root 2 over 2. Again, all we had to do was divide 7 by root 2. Now let's try one more. This time we have a hypotenuse of 25, and we'll do the same thing as last time. We get 25 over the square root of 2, and we'll rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and bottom by root 2, which gives us 25 root 2 over 2. 
and those are our leg lengths. We get 25 root 2 over 2 here, and 25 root 2 over 2 here. And before we move on to 30, 60, 90 right triangles, let me just add a quick note on how to identify 45, 45, 90 right triangles. As you saw in all of our earlier problems, we were given a triangle with two 45 degree angles labeled. But there's also a few other ways to identify 45, 45, 90 right triangles. Another way to identify 45, 45, 90 right triangle is if it's labeled with congruent angles like this. The reason why this works is because a triangle always has 180 degrees. And if you subtract the 90 degrees from the right angle, that leaves you with 90 left. And 90 divided by two congruent angles is 45. So that means this angle is 45 degrees, and so is this one. And the last way to identify 45, 45, 90 right triangle is if it has the congruent side labels. And this is because if it has congruent sides, that means it has congruent angles, which leads us to this scenario right here. Now let's move on to 30, 60, 90 right triangles. This is what a 30, 60, 90 right triangle looks like. The side opposite of the 30 degree angle is x, the hypotenuse is 2 times that, and the longer leg is the short leg times the square root of 3. And why does this work? Well, let's take a look at this 30, 60, 90 right triangle right here, and we'll call this side x. Now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this triangle right here. We're basically just going to copy and paste it and flip it and put it right next to it like this. Now, since this triangle is exactly the same as this triangle, that means it shares the same characteristics. So this angle is also 30 degrees. And since this is 60 degrees, this angle is also 60 degrees. And since this side length is x, that means this side is also x. Now, instead of looking at these as two smaller right triangles like this, we're going to look at this as one big triangle. So what is the length of this side of this big triangle? Well, that's x plus x, which gives us 2x. And what about this angle? What's this angle? Well, it's 30 plus 30, which gives us 60 degrees. And now you can see we have three 60 degree angles in this triangle, which means this is an equilateral triangle, which means all the side lengths are equal. So if this side is 2x, that means this side is also 2x, and this side is also 2x. Now let's put this triangle to the side and look back at our original 30, 60, 90 right triangle. We just proved that this side right here is 2x, which means this hypotenuse is 2x. And now to find the length of this longer leg, we just need to do the Pythagorean theorem. For now, let's call this longer leg b. And again, we'll just use our Pythagorean theorem to find the length of b. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we plug in our values, so we get x squared plus b squared equals 2x all squared. And what we want to do is we want to solve for b in terms of x. So we'll get x squared plus b squared equals 4x squared. And then we'll subtract x squared from each side, which gives us b squared equals 3x squared. And we take the square root of both sides, so we get the square root of b squared equals the square root of 3x squared, which gives us b equals x root 3. So we get x root 3 right here. And that's how we got to this pattern. So as you can see, this pattern is a little more complex than the 45, 45, 90 right triangle pattern. And if you have trouble remembering what the side lengths are, just remember 30, 60, 90 makes 1x, 2x, x root 3. And if you have trouble remembering where these side lengths go, here's a pretty useful tip for you to remember. The biggest side is always opposite the biggest angle in a triangle, and the smallest side is always opposite of the smallest angle. So the biggest side is our 90 degree angle, or our right angle, and that's why 2x, our biggest side, is across from the 90 degree angle. And our smallest side out of x, 2x, and x root 3 is x. So that's why it's opposite our smallest angle, 30 degrees. And 60 degrees is our middle angle in terms of value, and so is x root 3. x root 3 is between 1x and 2x. So we can use the pattern we learned right here to find the side lengths of any 30, 60, 90 root triangle. Personally, I think the easiest type of question is if you're given the length of the shorter leg or the leg opposite of the 30 degree angle. So we're going to start with a problem like that. As you can see here, our short leg is 7. And in our model right here, we can see that the hypotenuse is 2 times the short leg, which means our hypotenuse is 14. And you can also see here that the longer leg is the shorter leg times the square root of 3. So we get 7 root 3 as our longer leg. Now let's look at another example. 
This time we have 12 as our shorter leg, or the leg opposite the 30 degree angle. And again, the hypotenuse is double that, so we get 24 as the hypotenuse, and the longer leg is the shorter leg times root 3, so our longer leg is 12 root 3. And now, what if we're given the hypotenuse, like a problem like this? Well, I think the easiest way to handle problems where you're not given the shortest leg is to find the shortest leg as soon as possible. So as we can see, the hypotenuse is double the shortest leg. So our hypotenuse here is 14, which means our shortest leg is 7. And again, the longer leg is the shorter leg times root 3, so we get 7 root 3. And that's it. And what about this problem? Our hypotenuse is 18, which makes our shorter leg half of that, which is 9. And the longer leg is 9 root 3, because that's the shorter leg times root 3. And how about this problem right here? This time we have 8 root 2 as our hypotenuse, which means the shorter leg is half of that, which is 4 root 2. And to get to our longer leg, we need to do the shorter leg, which is 4 root 2, times the square root of 3, which gives us 4 root 6. So our longer leg is 4 root 6. And now, what if you're given the longer leg, like in a problem like this? Well, to get from the longer leg to the shorter leg, you just need to divide by root 3. So we'll do the same thing right here. 5 divided by root 3 gives us 5. And the hypotenuse is double the shorter leg, so we get 10 as our hypotenuse. And what if we have just a normal integer as the longer leg? We'll do the same thing as earlier, it's just a little more work. So we have 4 divided by root 3, and we'll rationalize the denominator, so we'll multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3, which gives us 4 root 3 over 3. So our shorter leg is 4 root 3. 3 over 3, and our longer leg is double that, which is 8 root 3 over 3. And how about one last practice problem where we're given the long leg? Let's take a look at this problem right here. We have our long leg as 7 root 2, so that means our short leg is 7 root 2 divided by root 3, and then we're going to rationalize the denominator, so we'll multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3, which gives us 7 root 6 over 3. So that's the length of our short leg, 7 root 6 over 3, and our hypotenuse is double that, so we get 14 root 6 over 3 as our hypotenuse. And just a quick note about 30, 60, 90 right triangles, as you saw earlier, all of our triangles were labeled with a 30 degree angle and a 60 degree angle, but if you just see a 60 degree angle or if you just see a 30 degree angle, that's the same thing because a triangle is always 180 degrees, and if you do the subtraction, you'll get the last angle, so this is 30 degrees and this is 60 degrees. And that's it for special right triangles. I hope you learned something new today. And if you have any questions, comments, videos you want to see, or anything else you want to say, feel free to drop a comment down below. And other than that, I will see you next time.